Hey guys, this is the Gilness for Nerds in a Bar. We are here at Star Wars Celebration Chicago 2019, and I am here with Brian Rockfall of Rockfall Enterprises, and uh, he's got a little something to show us that I think you might be interested in. Why don't you talk to us about this very rare rocket-firing Boba Fett that we have back here? Yes. Well, most people know that rocket fats are quite rare, but this one, what makes this one stand out is that it is uh, molded entirely in uh, gray, and it's pretty much close to the uh, finalized uh, figure. It's got the copyright in the back of the legs and the firing mechanism, if we can wait for it to rotate around again. Um, if you could get in close and look at it with a uh, loop, you'll notice the firing mechanism is a little bit more refined on this one. So it's very close to uh, production. Okay. So there's only three of these known. They were found mid-1990s uh, by one collector from a, um, they came straight from a Kenner engineer. And um, this particular example went overseas in 1999 and spent most of its time there in Japan wow. for a while. And only recently, last couple of years, has it come back to the uh, United States. So tell us a story about kind of where it started from, who it was that, uh, that kind of harassed Kenner. I think we were talking about that. And well, then yeah. how, did, how did it get over to China and how did it get back well, here? Well, we're talking about Steve Denny. And um, back in the day, he used to um, write uh, Kenner employees a lot of notes and right, right. he'd call them. And eventually, when time came for them to start uh, dumping uh, uh, prototype products uh, and samples and whatnot, they called him up and said, hey, we're taking it to the dump, come down, pick it up, he yeah. did. And that kind of got him a reputation that eventually led him to whatever he did to get his hands on the three of these. Right. So I don't know all the details, but that's a general, uh, the, the cliff notes of, right, right. of that. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. And then from his hands, it went. Well, from this, from his hands, uh, they went to, um, like I say, this one here went uh, directly to uh, Japan. Okay. Another one went to uh, another collector and uh, eventually found its way to to me. Right. And then another one um, has been out there for a while. Right. And do we know where that all of them are? I, the, the other one, right the, the other one, I can't really discuss. Okay. But uh, but they all three are accounted for. Right. Wow. There's only three in the entire world of these things, which leads us to the price of this uh, interesting collectible. Now get ready, because yes, it's, it's either your house or a Boba Fett. For the faint of heart, uh, look away now. Uh, <laughs> this one here is modestly priced at uh, $365,000. Plus tax here at Plus Chicago tax, yes. Star Wars Celebration. So I might as well say about four hundred and four or something Ooh. like that. Yeah. $404,000. I, I, I ran the numbers once, didn't want to look at them again. Unbelievable. And they are beating down the door to buy it, folks. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're beating the doors down, but this, yeah, will, well. this will go to a nice home. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, because, I mean, if, you follow, if people are following the rocket fit market in general, just the standard blue, gray right. L slots, uh, which are about 50 of them out there, they're, they're already trending quite high. There right. was the... Cakes auction, and that one there went for eighty-six thousand dollars. And there's been some sales now that are going north of that. That's unbelievable. So you know, so you know, then this one doesn't seem so unreasonable when you consider, yeah, true. You know, uh, the standard one being for around about a you know, hundred thousand dollar piece versus one of three. Let me ask you, as a high-end Star Wars collector. What do you attribute the sudden surge in price? It seems like a lot of a lot of items have really just hit the skyrocket all of a sudden. That is a very hard question. Some people just attribute it to Disney buying the franchise, revitalizing everything. I kind of like to think that the market is just kind of, we're coming into a middle age here. Mm -hmm. We're finally just getting to that point. Right. And markets kind of come and go, they rise, they fall. And we're just finally getting to that point, I think too, where people have the disposable income is about the other yeah. way to put it. We're, we're older now. Right. Uh, is one thing I put it, because these, these, these fits, uh, not this one in particular, but a rocket fit in general, if you go back to about, you know, again, the mid-90s, a normal blue one would have gone for maybe a couple thousand dollars. Right, yeah. And I wish I had gotten on that boat. <laughs> yeah, but as one guy put it, he was in college back then. Yeah. You got the two, all the college fee, the, the tuition, right. he's you know, trying to make it on his own. And, and, and the way he put it is $2,000 back then might as well have been 100000 today. Yeah, it's it's all... So the price kind of relative. Yeah, it's all relative to what you're making the comparison to. So, yeah. yeah. So, I think the disposable income, the market just kind of growing. and So, yeah, I think it, there's a lot of things that come into it. So, it's hard to pin it down to one simple thing. Right, right. And for the Rocket Fed, we, you have some interest, a few buyers here and there that are kind Well, of, there, are, there are buyers for Rocket yeah. Feds, yes. I mean, and you do hear them selling. 
And uh, of course, you know, there's also this, this here is an L slot. There's the J slot that's out there too. That would have been the stage that this essentially developed into. Yeah. My personal theory is this, because it's in such a late stage of development, you can't call it a first shot anymore. It is more like an engineering pilot yeah. or something close to that stage. Yeah. Had they not decided to do a retooling on the firing mechanism and turning the L into a J, this is what we would, would have right. got. But then there is that J slot that's out there too, and that's the finalized figure. Yes. So absolutely amazing. Now I got to ask you, having such a treasure in your collection, why do you want to sell it? Well, this piece is on consignment. I see. As okay. Out, I do have one in my collection. It is okay. treasured. So gotcha. yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say this is not yeah. this is not something that I would I would give up very easily. So. No, this is a type of piece that once you surrender it, you don't go back into it unless you. Right. It's it's going to be an unfortunate situation to go back into right. it. Exactly. Yeah. And as far as the certification goes, can we talk about how do we know that it is actually certified real, the real deal? Well, when it sold back in 99, uh, we have a letter of authenticity from uh, Thomas Derby, who signed it. Uh, the gentleman who discovered it, Steve Denny, signed it. And then you have a couple of uh, Star Wars, uh, very renowned Star Wars experts, Gus Lopez, Ron Salvatore, that signed it. So we have the original documents that have come with it. And I have also been able to uh, to examine the uh, the three different examples, either directly or indirectly, with photographs. And there are there are certain traits that I don't want to get into here that allow me to authenticate this. Okay. So it, it's been very meticulously combed over. Right. No, I, I don't I don't doubt it. But I know there's people out there that are going well, going to question, are going to ask, they're going to want to. Know. Well, yeah, because I it, there's kind of an irony here because normally when you talk about a L slot, if you talk about copyright and back of the legs. That is usually the kiss of death to the conversation. But this one, and it's uh, two brethren, they're the only exception to the rule. Any other else thought you see copyright run. You don't make eye contact. Right. <laughs> you just keep going. Nice. Great. Yeah, it's a great piece. Absolutely. It's beautiful. I'm so glad that we've been able to actually I'm see it here at the show. The yeah, it's a, it's a real, real thrill. Absolutely. And before we go, I just want to talk a little bit about a couple other pieces here we want to give some attention to. So let's talk about uh, the Belloc and also the Stormtrooper and the Vader. Okay, well, let's start with the uh, Belloc and ceremonial yeah. robe. Well, first of all, the Belloc was never released to the public on a card like this. The only way to get it was to send in a few proof of purchase seals and you'd get it in the mail in a little uh, white box, right. the mailer box. And for a while early on, those even those were tough to find. And then there was a small warehouse find and then they became uh, the warehouse finds the warehouse yes. find. but this is going back 20 years ago but yeah. it was a profound enough find where you can still go on eBay and get the little boxed one yeah. for a few hundred bucks not gonna be a big deal the carded one on the other hand is a whole different uh, ball game right. there are only five known authentic examples there might be a sixth one the either are toy fair or salesman samples and what people will notice by looking at the card and comparing it to a production card of any of the other figures that were produced is the hieroglyphic border is a little darker. If you could hold it, the card's a little thicker. It basically it's a proof card. And the figures I've talked to a few people and they, they hypothesize that if we were to be stupid enough to open it, we'll find the figures are yeah I know, I know. That the, the figures are probably going to be uh, engineering pilots or first shots at that stage because there are some differences of the figure itself. It's second to the rocket fits the Belloc is my favorite because it's the rocket fit as one guy put it was the crown jewels of unproduced toys right and to me the Belloc is the crown jewels of unproduced packaging it's yeah. and it's gorgeous I mean it's not just rare it looks displayable another consignment piece here we have a uh, first shot uh, stormtrooper um, it is uh, hand glued so it's not sonically welded and it's all hand painted so if you got you've got a little close-up shot of that there you'll notice that the little lines on the arms are not exactly perfectly straight as you right, can get right. the they're, just, they're, you know, they're a little off, but that's what you want to see. The, uh, the blaster is also um, unproduced. It was not found with the figure, but it, it's, it's matched to the figure. Right. So the figure would have come with. And um, the notes that accompany the figure uh, say it's a little bit smaller than production, and the arms are a little bit softer than production. Really? So it's about wow. all you would expect. Very cool, the little intricacies. Yes, yes. It basically it matches what you would expect from those early 12 first shots. Right. Beautiful. And how about the Vader? This well, is a double the Vader, telescope. That is the double telescoping uh, Darth Vader. 
Um, and what makes this one special is it scored an AFA uh, 90. Oh my God. There's only four that show up on the registry. Unbelievable. So, yeah. That's beautiful. So let's uh, let's run down the prices on the these three here. So Vader. You give everyone a heart attack. The, the yeah. Vader is uh, 25,000 for the Vader. Yep. 38. 38,000. For the uh, Stormtrooper. And uh, 55,000 for the Bell. 55,000 dollars. Holy moly. And then we talked about the, the yes, FET we already. To, we we we're not going to say it again. Yeah, you can yeah. rewind the video. Yeah. Well, this is beautiful stuff, Brian. Thank you so much for bringing it along. Thank we you. really appreciate it. We really, really appreciate really you taking the time. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Guys, if you want it, you can get in touch with Brian. We'll post some contact information in the, the comments for you. So hopefully uh, you'll be adding a really nice uh, collectible to your collection. Thanks for joining us here at Star Wars Celebration 2019. This is Nerds in the Bar. I am the Gilness. We'll see you later.